Show your support. Join the discussion in the comments. Hello, I am that British guy and welcome. Now, earlier in the month, I did a list of the top five things that I think will happen in the wrestling world in 2019. So it seems only fair to do a similar sort of video for things that I think will happen in the gaming world in 2019. So let's begin. Number five, Sony give a release window for the PlayStation 5. Now, this is not to say that I think they will announce that the PlayStation 5 will come out in 2019, but I think what will happen is at some point during 2019, they will give a release window for the PlayStation 5, which, to be honest, I think will probably come out in the fourth quarter of 2020, just to kind of extend the PlayStation 4 out a little bit longer because there are some kind of top tier exclusives coming out uh, this year or rumoured to be coming out this year and they'll want to make the most of that but also if they release it towards the end of next year then they will be able to capitalise on all the Christmas sales. So what I think will happen is at their kind of exclusive um, press thing that they're doing instead of E3 this year there will be a lot of big announcements and one of those kind of the, the pinnacle of all of it effectively will be uh, kind of this reveal of the PlayStation 5 some more concept artwork or perhaps even kind of proper imagery of what the, uh, the actual console is going to look like um, a little bit of its capabilities and obviously ultimately a kind of a loose bracket shall we say for its release in 2020. Number four, Nintendo to add SNES and N64 games to their eShop. Now as some of you may be aware I over the Christmas period acquired a Switch and I had a little bit of a look on their eShop when I got it and there are, like on the PlayStation Store, a lot of old games that you can download and obviously keep on the hard drive. But I noticed that they were all NES games. Now, what is interesting about this is the fact that they've obviously already released the NES Classic and the SNES Classic. So, they've obviously been doing some work in kind of uh, tweaking and cleaning up some of those SNES games in order to put them on the Classic. So my feeling is that at some point during this year, at least those games, if not a few more, will get added to the eShop. And why stop there, really? Why not go that little bit further to the N64 console? After all, it has been one of their most popular consoles of the last couple of decades. Um, really, it was kind of their last hurrah other than the handheld um, side of things. So why not feature games from the SNES and the N64 on their eShop, kind of cash in on the nostalgia that is going on a lot at the moment. We're seeing a lot of kind of remakes and remasters or old series kind of being rebooted again. So they've got that license on a lot of their old games, more so really than Sony and Microsoft have. So it's kind of very easy for them to just clean those games up a bit, chuck them on the eShop, stick them behind a paywall, especially games that you either can't get easily anymore or cost the earth because they are so rare. Why not put them on there and just make some more money out of people because I'm sure people will be willing to play those games, especially kind of some of the old favourites that they're not able to get anymore. Number three, Europe to outlaw microtransactions in gaming under gambling laws. Now, there's a lot to unpack with this. There have been a couple of countries within the EU, um, predominantly Belgium and the Netherlands, that have been trying to completely outlaw um, the current practice of microtransactions within gaming, kind of seeing them as effectively gambling and either kind of making um, publishers remove them from their games or to change the age brackets of those games to kind of prevent younger and more vulnerable customers from getting sucked into this world of constantly um, farming real life money to get kind of credits and um, special items and things like that. 
Now, there is some work as well going on in America. There are a few uh, senators over there that have been discussing this and are trying to get the laws kind of um, updated. And again, looking at this from a gambling perspective, making sure that they are kind of protecting the younger and more vulnerable gamer. But it seems that um, the countries within the EU are trying to kind of go that little bit further. They're willing to kind of hand out hefty fines and imprisonment to kind of the, the big bosses at these companies if their rules are not followed. Now, we're still kind of going through the motions with that over here. Um, nothing really has been completely set in stone yet, but it seems like they're wanting to go forward with this. And the thing about the EU is, once a couple of countries pick that up and present it to um, the European Parliament, then it's likely that they'll be able to get quite a big following within the other member states. And obviously if they're able to do that, granted it's not uh, Japan, China or the USA, three very big markets, but arguably Europe is probably the biggest English speaking generally, um, at least as a second language, the biggest English speaking market outside of the United States. And that being obviously the kind of biggest secondary language in the world, um, doesn't bode well for companies that are trying to sell to the European market unless they change their practices. So watch this space because I think a lot is going to be happening with that this year and hopefully they're able to put a hell of a lot of restriction on this so that um, gaming companies just think twice before putting it in their games because it ends up not being worth all of the hassle and the legal ramifications and the loss of sales and money. Number two, remakes of Xbox exclusives. Now, I'm gonna put this out there. I'm not really an Xbox gamer. Um, I've never owned the console myself and I've had very limited experience with the games and obviously the online side of things in terms of their kind of eShop, things like that. But it seems to me from what I have seen as a kind of an outsider that they're not really following suit as much as certainly Sony and Nintendo are in terms of taking their exclusive games, cleaning them up a bit and re-releasing them. As I said in an earlier point at the moment, nostalgia for these older games, especially amongst gamers of sort of my age that played them as kids the first time round, um, that's kind of at an all time high. We have already seen on PlayStation 4 um, the remake of the Crash Bandicoot trilogy, the Spyro trilogy, and we will later on this year be getting Crash Team Racing as a remake. Not to mention the fact that um, Final Fantasy VII Remake has been mentioned many, many years ago and is still something that Square are kind of developing as the year goes on. More recently with Nintendo, with them releasing Let's Go, which is kind of effectively a cleaned up um, version of Pokemon Yellow from way back when, with a few more kind of features and bits and pieces fed into it as well, they are starting to get on that bandwagon of taking existing games, cleaning them up or kind of remaking them from scratch if necessary and then putting them back out there in the public. And I just think it's time that Microsoft followed suit with the Xbox, especially as they kind of need to start thinking about getting ahead for the next generation of gaming because if the PlayStation 5 does what the PlayStation 4 did, um, compared to obviously Xbox's, I believe it's Scarlet at the moment as a working title, we'll call it that anyway, compared to the Xbox One, if we get a repetition of that again, then that is going to put Microsoft on a very wobbly ground. So they kind of need to start thinking about getting back into the race for the next generation by getting people more invested in the Xbox as a brand and as Microsoft as a brand as well. And what better way to do that if you can't release some new exclusives within this time than to just kind of clean up some of the older games and re-release them to the public. And number one, Death Stranding and Final Fantasy VII Remake 
to be released in Q4. Right, I thought I would go big for the last one. Now, both of these games have been hyped a lot over the last couple of years. Obviously, ever since Kojima left Konami, all we've seen and heard about is Death Stranding through various teaser trailers. Uh, we've now seen a bit of gameplay. There have been quite a few interviews as well with some of the voice actors of late, all sort of saying that they're wrapping up their work. And Sony themselves have also said that they have not witnessed um, kind of a brand new company and a brand new game and IP be developed this quickly. Now, this kind of links into what I was saying at the beginning of the video about the PlayStation 5. This game has to come out on the PlayStation 4. It's been in development on the PlayStation 4 for a number of years now, and to really get the best sales it can, it also needs to come out around the kind of Christmas period. So there's probably really only one of those remaining, and that has to be this year. If the PlayStation 5 doesn't come out next year and gets pushed to 2021, then obviously Death Stranding could come out Christmas time 2020. But personally, I think that's going to be too long since the initial announcements for this game to be released. And I think an early 2020 release will be a bit of a waste, to be honest, as this is one of the biggest and most hyped PlayStation exclusives there have been for a number of years. The same can be said for Final Fantasy VII Remake. We already have been told that this game will be kind of released in sections, in episodes if you like. So I'm not saying that the whole game will be finished off and released this year, but certainly the initial section which we believe at this point to be kind of around what happens in Midgar um, and kind of up to potentially the escape from Midgar or maybe all the way up to the events of Junon. Now obviously the Kingdom Hearts 3 game will be out very very soon so that will free up a lot of staff to transfer over to the Final Fantasy 7 remake project and we've already been told by those in the know over there that that is what the studio intends to do. This is effectively going to be their next big project. It's kind of just been um, plodding along on the sidelines um, while Final Fantasy XV and Kingdom Hearts 3 were in production. But now they're done and obviously we're not getting any more DLC or anything other than the next release, the Arden release for Final Fantasy XV. That's those projects done. So we've got a lot of staff freed up to be working on the Final Fantasy VII project. It might even be that the first section is pretty much done and they just need to kind of keep developing forward for the other areas of the game and again in order to maximize the sales for this it kind of needs to come out in the Christmas period and I think that these are two of the things as well as the PlayStation 5 that is likely to be announced at this big Sony kind of conference that they're doing in place of E3 this year. So there we go, they were my thoughts for the five biggest things to happen in the world of gaming in 2019. Please let me know what you think, uh, whether you agree or disagree with any of my points, please let me know in the comments below. Please also like, share and subscribe if you can. Until next time, I have been That British Guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.